Chimamanda, you live in Nigeria and in America, and that very much informs this book. Mm. Uh, are you reluctantly in America, enthusiastically in America? Would you rather be in Nigeria or rather be in America? <laughs> <laughs> um, um, somewhere between enthusiastically and reluctantly. Um, I like America, but it's not mine. Right. So I like, I, you know, I like, the, I like that there's regular electricity. <laughs> I like that the internet is fast. I like, um, right, so I like all of those sort of convenient things about America, but it's not mine. I'm not as, Nigeria is home for me. Nigeria is, Nigeria is where I care about. Um, but I also like that I can leave Nigeria. So <laughs> it is very busy. <laughs> it can get very busy. So it's sort of home, but I, I, but I like that I can leave home. I, I liked very much, because I've lived in America myself, that you describe it as a very rich uncle who doesn't really know who you are, but all the same, you can't help feeling fond of her. America is, that's really how, that's how I feel about the U.S. In some ways, I feel a certain gratitude because, I mean, somebody was asking me recently why I didn't come to the U.K. to go to school, and I said the reason is America gives you money. I said, if you do well, you, you kind of expect that you'll get a scholarship somewhere, which isn't the case here. Mm. So, so I, um, yeah, I feel grateful. Your first book uh, was very much about Biafra. Mm. I, when I was at university, Biafra was our cause. Um, there, there wasn't a university campus that wasn't caught up in, in what was happening in the Civil War. Um, this book is about these two cultures. It, it's about somebody who fell in love in Nigeria, but then fell in love in America, and, and all those tangles. Is it a love story, or is it a love story between two countries? I think it's both, actually. I, I'm very interested in the different, um, the different permutations of love. So it's, and, and in some ways, I think that for me, because all, you know, all of my work is, you know, I mean, writing is very much in some ways about vanity. It's, it's really about you, isn't it? <laughs> and, and for me, it's, it's sort of trying to make sense of, America has been such a part of me, because I left Nigeria when I was 19. I was educated in the US. There's, you know, there's certain things that I, I find myself, I spell the American way now to my father's absolute horror. <laughs> and so there's a connection there for me to America, but, but also there's a strong and permanent pull of Nigerian. And I think this book is about that, that push and pull, that I like America, but really, where do I want to spend most of my time? Nigeria. But then it distills into the question of the human love between mm. each other. Mm. And that's a tangled business. Mm. I mean, here's this young girl who is in love with this boy, but leaves, mm. remains in love, but then falls in love with the American boy. Mm. Why did you want to get into this <laughs> deep stuff? <laughs> because that's what happens in life, isn't it? I mean, I think, you know, we love, don't we? We love, well, I don't know about other people, but I think we, that human beings have the ability to love different people in different ways, and sometimes even at the same time. So Ifemelu has a different kind of love for Obinze, but then she goes to the US and life goes on and you meet people and she finds a different kind of love. And I think that it's a relationship that makes her grow. So I think it's very important for her, you know, for, for her becoming fully herself. Is, is it a more superficial love given the pace of America? <laughs> <laughs> um, that was, I, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> Well, I, I can't mean, help thinking no, that's such an English thing to well, say about well, America. You think, uh, I, I would be tempted to think that in Nigeria it would be more, a more organic love because they shared mm. the same country. Once she got to America, she was having love on an American basis. <laughs> I don't know what that is. I think maybe the difference is that um, I think cross-cultural relationships can be... Um, it, 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 they take on a different... A different... Uh, I mean, there's something to them. In other words, it's easier when you share the same culture. Mm. Because then when you don't... But it's more intoxicating when you don't. There's something, there's, there's a heightened sense when you don't. Because now there's the layer of sort of... It's not... Mystery. It's not, yeah. The exotic, the unknown, the sort of learning about something entirely new because you, you love somebody else. And I think she has that with her American boyfriend. But if you can stage these love affairs um, in these two such different worlds, why is immigration such a problem? Why, why mm. 
Why is the experience of race mm. so testing when it's possible, as you describe in your book, mm. for two people of different cultures to have such an intense love affair? You know what, I think that, I mean, I think human beings will connect, but, but what, what, the structures that make it difficult. I think that the US in particular, and I talk about it because that's where I know fairly well. I think that the way that, that America is set up makes it really difficult for, for people of different races, particularly white people and black people, mm. to connect. You know, that, that there's such a segregation, and not just in the way people live, but in the way people think about race. Mm. So I think that's why. But, but you find that when people... But it's a very multicultural society in, 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 in Lagos too, for example, or well, in Nigeria elsewhere. But, but it's a elsewhere. different thing though, it's a different thing. And, and, and this is why when I talk about race, what I mean, maybe we should change the terminology and talk about skin colour. Because by race I don't mean ethnicity. I thought we wanted to stop talking about skin no, colour. <laughs> No, we can't stop talking. I mean, this is the other thing I think this book is about, the idea that there's no such thing as colorblindness. I think it's, you know, I think it's just a... Um, I think that to insist on colorblindness is somehow to refuse to engage because, I mean, skin color really affects the way people experience the world, and we can't deny that, right? But, but I think when I say that, what I mean is that sometimes people conflate race and ethnicity. So in Nigeria, Nigeria is very diverse, but not racially diverse. I mean, not skin color diverse. Mm -hmm. We're ethnically diverse. And that has its own challenges. But mm -hmm. in some ways, it's quite different from race. Um, I can't avoid the obsession with hair, <laughs> partly because I share it. I mean, my mother didn't have any hair. She, she suffered from alopecia totalis, which means mm -hmm. you have none at all. And, and uh, you are obsessed with hair, straight mm -hmm. hair, box braids, cornrows, dreadlocks, afros, twists, raucous curls, kinky curls, and TWAs teeny weeny afros. Where is all the... Well, I can see that you have a very interesting construct there. Where does it come from? I don't know. I, I um... Uh, wait, but um, did your mother wear... So she wore a wig? Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Did she wear different wigs, or did she sort of wear the same wig and... and did she... She had several wigs, and, and, and they would have to go away to be reconfigured from time to time ah. and come back. In, did people in brown know? boxes, which we were never told what was inside. Oh, right. Yeah. So people didn't know that it wasn't her hair? No. Ah, uh, that's no. interesting. But that is your hair. Well, part of it may not be. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I see. You know a bit about black hair. The tips are not. The tips are... It's what's called Afro-kinky hair. That's Afro-kinky. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, and... Uh, but and it's very interesting that, that so many elements of you are yes. woven into this book. Yes. And hair is absolutely one inescapable factor, yes. isn't it? Yes, yes. And it's, are you somehow a lesser woman if you don't go for this kinky whatever? <laughs> of course not. Of course not. <laughs> of course not. But I did want to write about hair because it's not just... I mean, it's not... It's hair, and I'm interested in hair and just the sort of very hair level, but also just... An, is hair a conversation? It's a political thing. Is it? It is. A statement? Black women's hair is political. Are you and making a statement? I don't intend to, but I do. You have it imposed on you, the statement? You really do. By walking in somewhere with my hair like this, people make assumptions, the, the immediate assumptions. If my hair isn't straight, people can assume that you're either... You know, they might think you're a, an angry black woman, or they might think you're very soulful, or they might think you're an artist, or they might think you're vegetarian. I mean, there are all kinds of things or that... Or somebody with... likes a lot of time in the hair salon. <laughs> <laughs> that too. Well, but no, the straight hair requires a lot of time as well. But, you know, I'm just interested in hair as, um, as a means of talking about other things. What does society tell us is beautiful? Because, you know, you look at women's magazines, and these things matter. I mean, these, are, these things matter. And we look at what's on television, and what, what, what does sort of the larger society say is mm. beautiful? It's straight hair. And so you have young girls who are growing up with that in their heads. And it's something that I, you know, I, I want to talk about and want to address and want to challenge. And now, this book took you five years to write. That's mm. going some, isn't it? Mm. Yes, yes. Why, why, why does it take so long? Because <laughs> of the complexity of the weave, rather like your hair, or, or because it takes you that time to develop the relationships, the mm. complex interactions between the cultures? Um... Yes. Or because you're an academic and doing something else? No, not really, no. I mean, writing and... and because I had... It, it just takes a while. I mean, I, I suppose I'm not one of those writers who can crank them out. I, it takes a while for me. I, I need to... You know, I'm a slow writer. I, I, uh, it takes me a while to just be happy with the sentence. 
and I do a lot of revising and rewriting. I'm a bit obsessive about that. So it's about the craft, at least as much about it's, as it's about, about the, the craft. Yes, it's also about. I'm very for me the the sentence is as important as the character. I'm very interested in in my characters. I want to believe them. I want to know them. So I spent time, spent quite a bit of time. I, mean, I wish I didn't. So. But therefore, when it comes to an end and it's ready mm. for publication, it's a bit, mm. of, a, bit of a letdown. It's I very mean, difficult for me to let go. I haven't quite let go, and I still want to make changes to that book. I just... <laughs> it's a bit too late now. It's out. <laughs> uh, Chinaranda, thank you very much indeed for talking to us. Thank you. Thanks.